Hey, and welcome back to Gaming for Tokens. I'm Marshall, and in this episode, we're going to be talking more about Maya. Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about polygon manipulation. So inserting and manipulating edges and vertices and things like that to be able to sculpt the geometry that you want to be eventually your final product. Um, so treat, yeah, treat this as kind of a intro to modeling, um, like a modeling 101 kind of thing. So really, really, really basic stuff. Uh, if you've never used a 3D modeling program before, this might be kind of valuable. If you've used one, even if it's not Maya, probably could skip it. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is hit space to go into the four view layout, and I'm gonna hit the channel box over here. I believe those are things that I covered in my last video. Um, yeah, so uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to create some geometry. We need to, to get something in here so that we can start manipulating it and changing it into what we need. That's typically how you do it. You usually don't um, draw each vertice out. You usually start with something and then um, slowly morph it over time. So we're going to go ahead and hit the polygons tab up here. And uh, this is your shelf of primitives and polygon manipulation tools. We're probably going to be working out of here a lot, and we're probably going to be working out of the add mesh and mesh tools quite a lot. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start with a polygon cube. So this button right here, and it is a two drag operation. So we're going to click and drag in the top view, and we're going to click and drag in either the front or the, um, the right view here. And once we have that, you'll see that we have a cube. Well, it's not really a cube, it's like a, a rectangle, but you get the gist. Uh, once it's created, we're going to click and drag over these three inputs, the three translates. We're gonna zero that out by hitting zero and then enter. Um, just as a refresher, the channels box is what displays like the position coordinates and the rotation coordinates, and I believe those are in world space, not, no. I believe these are in world space and these are in um, local space, if that makes sense at all. If not, don't worry about it. Um, anyway, so now we have a cube, and I'm going to hit this button right here in this pane that says smooth shade all, and I'm gonna hit this button right here next to it called wireframe unshaded. So the reason why I'm hitting those buttons, and you'll notice, you'll see what they do if you hit them. Um, this lets you view the edges of the sh of the, the polygon shape, and this lets you see the shape as if it was a solid object. And the reason why you want to do that is you want to be able to see what your shape looks like as if it were a real thing. So that's what the first thing does. Like this right here is kind of ambiguous and confusing because I don't really know if this is the front or this is the front. I mean, I can kind of tell because this side's bigger, but it's easier if it's just, you know, shaded. Um, and then the other one is the case because if I can line up the colors on this, you'll see that you can get to a point where this side and this side now look very similar and this looks like one big plane. But if you do this, you'll see that I can see the edges now. And now I know for sure where all of my edges are and where all my vertices are and faces end and things like that. So, um, yeah. So I'm gonna hit those two things and then we're gonna jump right into um, cutting this guy up and making some edges and, and things like that happen. So, <clears throat> and as this video goes on, I'll show you the other primitives up here too. So keep this tab open and just know that we're gonna talk about a sphere and a cylinder eventually here. Might talk about the other primitives, but I mean, once you've learned it once, you've pretty much learned it, all of them. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, that's thinking and tools. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is what the different components of a polygon object are. It's very important. I might've talked about this a little bit in my last video, but it's worth going over again as we start to sculpt on things. Um, because you handle, uh, you interact with all of them differently. And uh, the first of these things that we're going to talk about is faces. So we're going to right click on the object and we're going to hit face. We're going to see that the lines turn cyan and as we hover over faces, they turn red. What this means is that we're, well, we're in face mode and it's displaying what we can select. So I can grab this guy. You'll see that it kind of turns orange. I can hit W for move or you can hit this little button over here, the same thing. So just as a reminder, 
Q is selection tool, W is move, E is rotate, and uh, R is scale. So I'm going to hit W for for move, and I can click and drag this guy around, just like any other object. I can even grab the middle of this and like you know really warp it and move it around. But I'm going to undo that for now. Um, so yeah, I have I can grab faces, I can move them around. Um, so these are faces. The next type of thing we want to talk about is vertices. Vertices are kind of important. Um, they are the points, they're the vertices that make up a face, right? So in geometry, um, two, uh, a single point is is nothing. It's, it's volumetrically nothing. It, it is effectively just a point in space. And as far as uh, 3D modeling goes, a point on its own is essentially useless. The same thing could be said about a line or two points. Um, you can't really do a whole lot with just an edge. Now, once you have three points, you end up with a triangle. So for perspective here, you don't have to follow what I'm doing. Um, do, 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 do. This is a triangle. So, like I said, once you have three vertices, three points, you end up with a triangle. Now you can start to do stuff with this. This is a displayable polygon. This is um, a thing that can exist in reality, right? This, Well, according to geometry, you can have a, a planar object that has three points on it because it now is three-dimensional. Um, once you have four points, you end up with a plane. Then you can start to do some really interesting stuff because you can start to take these points and make them non two dimensional. You can start to make these things um, exist within three dimensions. And that's really exciting, right? And maybe I'm rambling a little bit too much about this, but <laughs> I don't think I am. Um, it's really valuable to know how these how these shapes are broken down and how like geometrically they are represented. This is why I'm talking about this. So that's vertices. That's faces and vertices, so faces, vertices. The next thing we're going to talk about in the last one of the three is edges. Edges are arguably one of the most important things in 3D modeling. An edge is a a um, uh, two verti the, a line between two vertices. Think about it like that. So if I grab this guy and I move it down, I've now changed the way the shape looks into, be kind of, into being kind of a wedge. And if I grab this one and that one, and I scale them down like so, I'm starting to create kind of an interesting shape with this. Um, so I'm, I'm 3D modeling essentially, right? Like this is, this is what modeling is, is taking things and manipulating them and moving them around and sculpting using the vertices and edges and, and things like that that, that the, the software provides you. Um, yeah, so feel free to um, pause the video if you want and take a cube and really mess with it and like push and pull some vertices even or um, or edges around and try to get a shape that you think is, is interesting. And then from there we can use that shape to, um, to go to town on uh, inserting new edges and inserting new geometry into this, this object. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, mess with something. Um, and then go ahead and restart. All right. So hopefully you've done that. If you haven't done that, uh, it's okay, I guess. But you should. You should do that. You should do that thing. The next thing we're going to talk about is what a loop is. Um, a loop is a... This is technically what's called a ring. But they're all loops. I, I think of them all as loops. Um but in the program they label them differently. So this is an edge ring. It, it is a, a loop or ring of faces. Now, or if, did I say edge? I meant face. It's a face ring or face loop. I prefer to call it a face loop, but the program calls it um, a ring, I believe. And you can access that through, oh, where is it? Two faces? Nope, okay. Uh, the way you select one of these is you grab a face and then you grab an adjacent face by um, via double clicking and holding shift. So you get a ring. Um, 
here. I'll try to do that again. So if you grab a face, you go to one of the adjacent faces, holding shift and double click, it'll select a ring all the way around. And it does that for any any ring of connected faces. So um, it's not just, you know, not just one. Uh, you can't just do it one place. You can do it anywhere. Um, you can do the same thing with um, edges. I don't know if you can do the same thing with vertices. I imagine you can. Um, there just aren't any vertice loops yet, which kind of segues brilliantly into my next thing. Uh, we're going to use the insert edge loop tool. Now that you kind of know what a loop is, this being uh, effectively a loop, an edge loop is the same thing but with edges, and there's a tool to just create them. It's pretty fantastic. So um, under uh, Edit Mesh, there is an Insert Edge Loop tool. And with any of these tools, whenever you use one of them, you're going to want to click that little box to the right, especially when you're learning. Um, later on, and you might see me do it um, after you've been in Maya for a while, you don't need to actually hit the little box. You can just hit the thing, hit the, 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 uh, ooh, the tool. But if you do that, then it doesn't present you with the options. And that's kind of what I want you guys to take a look at. I want you guys to understand how these tools work instead of just using them all the time because there's so many 3d models out there who don't know like what the tools are doing they just know what the tool ends up doing if that makes any sense they don't know how the the insert edge loop tool is a bad example but um there are tools in maya where they they maybe don't understand how how the tool functions but they see the results and they know that that's what they want to do i think that's kind of that's cheating to me like you should know how the thing works you should understand uh, what you can get out of a tool why didn't that come up there it is okay so if you hit the little box you should see this little thing and you can kind of um, this little window pop up and you can pull the options over so you can see all of it and what these do is um, this is the default settings by the way uh, oh if I didn't say this is a new computer and uh, a new mouse and keyboard everything's new um, so this is a fresh install of Maya. So everything that you're seeing here is something that um, you should be seeing on yours as well if you're using Maya 2014. Um, you might see different things, and things could be in different places if you're using the newer version, 2015. Um, I've, I've used it a bit, and they kind of rearranged things, and I'm trying to get my hands on a copy of it so that I can upgrade. But anyway, for now, um, this is a default install of Maya 2014. I haven't changed any settings or anything yet, so... Uh, you should be seeing what I'm seeing, hopefully, if you're using 2014. Anyway, so what you're, you're going to see over here is uh, relative distance from edge is going to be automatically checked. Equal distance from edge and multiple edge loops are the other two options. Um, multiple edge loops checkbox thing down here is, uh, is unchecked. That only works with uh, multiple edge loops being checked. Um, autocomplete, fixed quads, those are checked. Uh, insert edge loop low, yada, yada. Um, I don't think these have tooltips. They don't. Uh, smoothing angle is 30, and I can kind of talk about all this means. The gist is you don't have to touch any of this stuff to start using the tool and creating edge loops. If you just grab any of the edges, so any edge along the shape that you messed with, just click on it and you'll and hold down, and you'll see that you have this like green ghosting of the tool, and you can kind of choose where you want the edge loop to be and as soon as you let go it creates the edge loop now if you click again you'll get another one so maybe you want to be careful if you're just like clicking around like crazy um, but that's essentially what this tool does uh, I'm gonna undo these two changes and show you guys the other options on it really quick so equal distance from edge is interesting um, because so if you look at this see how this is staying relatively um, like straight up and down according to this view uh, it's staying all of these verts um, uh, let's see here this guy right here this little vert and this little vert are staying an equal distance away from the edge from where they started um, it's kind of a hard way to just it's kind of a hard thing to describe think about like a ratio right like if I click here they're both going to um, it's going to use the distance from here to there as a reference point for the ratio of what it should be from here to there and this is going to stay relatively straight along that plane so when I do this you'll see that I get like a flat edge oh well let me do that oh 
you'll see that I get kind of a, um, a flat edge that is pretty much parallel with this depending on where I clicked on the, uh, the, fa at the edge there. Um, compare that to the relative distance from edge and you'll see that that see that uh, the back vert down here on this screen if you watch that see how it like changes a ton and moves all the way up and down it's just using this as a percentage so if I'm 10% here I'm also 10% there but the other one uses it kind of like a, like I said like a ratio so it's like I'm this far away here I need to be the same far away there if that makes sense at all um, it doesn't take into account the whole line it just takes into account where I started if that makes sense that's kind of the two options there. Um, multiple edge loops is what I end up using a lot. Multiple edge loops behaves very differently though. Um, you punch in a number here and it goes from uh, two to 10. I don't think you can go any higher than 10. Whenever I try it just, yeah. It only lets you put in some, yeah, it only lets you put in some numbers. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, it's actually hard capped at 10. Like, you can't even go to 11. It doesn't even let you put it in anymore. That's funny. It used to let you put it in. Um, for our testing purposes, let's do three. And do the same thing you did before. Click and hold. You'll notice that when you move the mouse around, it doesn't actually move the ghosting around anymore. It doesn't move the tool. You have no choice in where these things go anymore. It just equally divides the, the shape up. Now, this is really cool if you know anything about 3D modeling because this, this is unbelievably handy. If you ever want to evenly segment a, a stretch of, of uh, geometry, this is the best way to do it by far. A lot of people will try to like extrude it in, which we'll talk about the extrude tool after we're done with this tool, I think. Um, it's It doesn't work as well. It, it has its place, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm going to show you guys the extrude tool because it's extremely important. It's one of the most important tools in this program, but it doesn't do this as well as um, people think it might. And again, if we take this, which is an edge loop, and by the way, I got that by just double clicking on the edge, um, then we can do all sorts of crazy stuff with this. Like we can create this shape, whatever that is. I don't know. Or we can just uh, pull it in. And now we're starting to get an interesting shape out of this, right? Like it, uh, I don't know. I don't wanna, I don't know what it would be, but it could be a thing. <laughs> I don't know. Um, take this and start like stretching it out and we end up with like a a tablature of some kind I don't know anyway so yeah we have this crazy shape we did all this stuff to it um, that's insert edge loop tool oh the way that I got out of the tool by the way is just by hitting in QWE or R any of those will work um, those all take you out of the tool that you're in and put you into the move rotate scale whatever tool that you hit um, and in, you'll notice that the tool settings is stayed up here because that's where the um, the options for insert edge loop tool were. You can just close those if you want. Um, yeah. Uh, also, to go between the different modes, is I'm right clicking on the object and just, just snapping between them. So like vertex, now I'm an object again. Object is your default state. That's kind of what you want to stay in, um, unless you're, you know, editing vertices and then you can edit vertices. So yeah, uh, that's the insert edge loop tool and a bunch of other stuff <laughs> that you may or may not wanted to know, but now you do. Um, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is the extrude tool. The extrude tool is extremely important. Um, it is the tool that you'll probably end up using the most because it creates geometry from existing geometry. That's kind of what we already did here, but we, I would consider this more like splitting and dividing the geometry up to be used. And then this is actually going to create geometry for you. So if I go to Edit Mesh, Extrude, just with the object selected, I get this weird tool and it does this weird thing and I don't really understand what's happening. It's because the Extrude tool can be used on, I undid that by the way. <laughs> the Extrude tool can be used for pretty much anything, on anything. It can be used on any poly object, even if you just have the object selected, but um, should usually be used on components that you have selected and components are these things vertices and faces and edges and things like that I believe you can extrude an edge I've never actually tried let's try oh my god you can that's cool all right well the fact that I've never done it yeah you know oh, of course I knew you could extrude edges I've extruded edges before sorry I'm crazy um, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and extrude uh, this top face here you can extrude anything you want on your dummy object if you have one actually no you know what I'm gonna shoot the bottom I'm gonna shoot the bottom 
So um, you may notice before that I hit this little button just now. Um, a lot of your poly tools are up here on your shelf as well as um, in, the, in the menus. So the first time I hit the extrude tool here, second time I hit the extrude tool here, they have the exact same tool. And they're just in two different places. Uh, for your convenience, I guess? I don't know. It, it ends up confusing a lot of people for some reason. But um, I'm going to use this one for now, even though, well, no, you know what? Let's look at the options. I said we have to look at the options. Let's look at the options. So this one came up in a separate window. It didn't come up in the tools menu, which is weird. And um, it has all these strange options. It has a smoothing angle again, which I know I didn't talk about. I might not end up talking about these, but it has to do with um, edge smoothing. This is the default edge smoothing um, of an object. And that's, it's kind of a complicated topic, but I'll go into edge normals and stuff in another video, maybe the next one. There's, the, there's divisions. Um, there's offset, there's thickness, and there's all sorts of other stuff down here. Um, curve, select the generated, yada yada. Uh, basically, um, the thickness is this guy right here. And, uh, okay, so the extrude tool is special, and it comes up with these little th things, these little, like, um, prompts, I guess, like thickness, offset, and divisions. You can actually click and drag on these, even though they don't highlight with the mouse or anything, you can click and drag on thickness and it'll like bring the object out and then offset will um, taper it. And then divisions will insert edge loops along that. Um, so this is just kind of a, another way of using it. The way that I typically use it is by using this thing. So I just pull this out and I hold control in the scale to scale it non-uniformly along that, that axis. And then I will use maybe the offsets to, uh, or not the offsets, the divisions to divide it if I want. Um, and actually I want three. So you'll notice you can select those numbers too. Um, and that creates that geometry. Now if I hit G for repeat last tool, that's a very, very important hotkey for you to remember, is, uh, is G the letter G as in good. Um, it, it repeats the last tool again and you can like start again and you can create more and more geometry with it. Um, that's really, really handy and important and it'll make you really, really fast if you're always using G. So without even using the extrude tool, I'm going to select here and I'm gonna double click to select that edge loop or the face loop. And I'm going to hit G again and I'm starting to get this, uh, you can see how this is very iterative and fast. Like, I'm extruding, I'm, um, um, I'm selecting geometry, I'm going between to the different modes, I'm grabbing things, and I'm manipulating them. So, you can be, you can become very, very fast with this, is my point. Um, and there are tips and tricks and hotkeys and things like that to become faster. So anyway, that's the extrude tool. It's it's extremely important. It's the only way that you're gonna um, probably end up creating geometry uh, from existing geometry just because of the nature of it. Um, and actually, if you ever want to go back into an extrude, like I just screwed that up. I'm trying to undo. Can I not undo right now? Oh, all right. Well, either way, what I wanted to do is I wanted to insert an edge loop along this so that I can do something to it, which, thankfully, there's an insert edge loop tool, right? So I can close this extrude tool, and I can go relative distance, and I wanted that edge loop right about there. The reason why I wanted it there was because I want to grab these three faces, and I want to extrude that out. Anyway. Uh, oh, not the back one. I want to do, oh, come on, that. So if I grab these three faces, I can kind of extrude this out, and it creates kind of a base for that to sit in. I don't know. I think that looks a lot better than than it did. I don't know what I'm making. Maybe it's a robot head. I, I have no idea. I'm just kind of messing around. Anyway, my point is that you can um, quickly bounce between tools by using G and uh, QWER and um, undoing and the hotbox here helps a lot, but you don't have to be proficient in that yet. The menus will get you there. Um, 
Yeah. So that is my point there. Um, the the next thing I wanted to talk about is the cut faces tool and oh, what is the other one? Edit mesh. I always forget where it is too. Well, there's the cut faces tool. Um, oh, I always forget what it's called. Maybe it is the cut. Oh, the cut faces tool is the one that I was thinking of. Oh, well, cool. So, there's the cut faces tool, and then there's the cut polygons? Oh, there's just the... Is it just cut? Oh my god, I'm going crazy. Um, I want to say it's just cut. No, this is the one that I wanted to... Okay, yeah, this is the one I wanted to show you. So, um... Sorry. Uh, the cut polygon tool is interesting. So going back to that, the cut polygon tool is here. If we look at the options really quick. There's not a whole lot. It's really not. Um, interactive is usually the one you're going to end up using. Um, there's the Z. There's different planar modes, which is um, probably handy. But uh, I wouldn't know. I've never actually used them before. <laughs> oh, it worked. So uh, the different modes there. The ZX, uh, whenever you see this kind of abbreviation for like YZ plane, ZX plane, XY plane, think about these planes as existing on the direction that isn't listed. So the, Z, the YZ plane is the plane, um, is this plane here in this viewport. You'll see that the Y and the Z are here. So it's the plane like this. That is a YZ plane, which exists on the X axis. So it exists across the X axis. If that makes sense at all. A lot of uh, mirroring and stuff is labeled this way, and whenever you mirror something along, for example, the ZY plane or YZ plane, it's going to mirror down the x-axis. So it's going to mirror from this side to that side because it's mirroring along that plane. So if we cut something along the YZ plane and we hit cut, it's going to cut it right down the middle. So that's, that's kind of how the cut faces tool works. Um, I would suggest just using it as interactive. Um, that's generally how I do it because the things, the, the, the way that I use this is typically in the orthographic views, which are these three views, the, the front side and top, um, or the front right and top, I guess. Um, and basically what this tool does is it lets you like look at something at a wonky angle and strike a line by clicking and holding. And letting go and it creates geometry along that this is really bad to do <laughs> first and foremost this is like one of the worst things you can do in a 3d program because it creates all this weird geometry like right here where I cut through that and made like this shape and then I also cut through that and it didn't actually create the line that I thought it was gonna make because I thought it was gonna make a line all the way around all this and it didn't it made this weird like zigzag thing and it made a bunch of um, what we'll call n-gons, like this guy here. And you don't have to know what an n-gon is quite yet, but it's important to know that um, they're bad. So if you ever hear someone say n-gon, they're usually talking about something that is bad in geometry. So I'm going to undo that. But that's not to say that this tool is bad. It has its uses, just like most tools. And I mean, somebody made it for a reason, right? So typically the way that I use it is if I wanted an edge loop along this, and for some reason the insert edge loop tool wasn't good enough. Like say that I wanted it at a weird angle like that. I can't get that with the insert edge loop tool, but now I have it. So now I can do something with that. I can like take this guy and I can extrude it out. And that's something that the insert edge loop tool maybe didn't get me. Um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a nitpicky thing and it only comes up every now and then, but uh, I've noticed that when it has come up, it's helped me quite a lot. Uh, a lot of people kind of swear it off, like a lot of things in this program, people swear it off as just, that's just a bad tool, never use it. I think that's really kind of narrow-minded. Like, every tool in this was made for a reason, so use them. I don't know. But that's the Cut, uh, cut Faces tool. It um, behaves pretty much how you'd expect. It cuts faces. Um, the other one that I wanted was the interactive split tool. 
this is the one that I was looking for before. The interactive split tool is really handy, um, and I would suggest not messing with any of these options. It has a lot of options. Well, I say it has a lot of options, but I mean, these are the options. Um, I've messed with this tool before, and when I messed with it, um, I couldn't figure out what I did, but I broke it. So I just had to reset it. <laughs> uh, the magnet tolerance is, I think, great right out of the box. Um, and the snap magnets, uh, again, I don't really, um, I think I know what these do. But it's better if I just show you. So you'll notice that this little orange dot is moving around on the surface and it's snapping to all these edges. And once you get close to a vertice, it snaps to that vertice. So if I come here and I click, that vertice turns <clears throat> has a red outline around it. And as I move, I now have an orange line. This is actually going to cut a face along that line. So if I go up here and I, I click on this vertice, I now have an orange line across there. And I can come across the back side here and do that. Oh, but see, that's bad because that went around. And I don't want to undo here because if I undo it, it like undoes the whole tool. So instead, you hit backspace and it deletes the previous vertice that was laid. What I want to do instead is I want to kind of look at this object from an angle that I don't think uh, can be misconstrued as something else. So like if I do it up here like this, where I, I kind of come around and I do that, that could have been misconstrued as going around the object like it was before. Or like that. See how like that line is the line that I drew technically. Like it's a straight line, but at the same time it's a straight line from the wrong side. So instead I'm going to um, do something like that. And what this is going to do when I hit enter is it's actually going to put edges of vertice or edges of geometry along that face. That is really important. I'm going to undo this and I'll show you why this is really important. I'm going to use G for repeat last tool, but for the record, that tool is the insert or interactive split tool and it's right here, it's right above the insert edge loop tool. Um, I'm going to go from here to the center and you'll notice that it snaps to the center of a an, an edge as well. And that's really important. That, I believe, is what the snap magnet is. If I increase this to 2, I believe it'll snap there, there, and there. So it'll, it'll divide the line into three segments, and it'll snap at the end of each one of those segments. Um, just like if I set this to 4, it'll snap here, 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 and here. So it divides the this thing into five pieces, and it snaps at the end of all of those. Uh, I would suggest keeping this at an odd number, um, just so that you'll always have the center line. Um, otherwise, you lose that center, and that's really bad. So if I make a V here, and I hit Enter, I get this. And then what I can do is I can come down here and strike a line down the middles of these objects until I get to a spot where I decide that I want to cap it off and I just make another V. So you see something really weird happen there. This is um, Maya being a diva. Like I talked about in my last video. Sometimes it doesn't behave the way you'd expect it to behave and it and this is one of those cases. The interactive split tool isn't amazing. It's really really unstable and it's really picky about what it decides it wants to do and what it doesn't want to do. And that was an instance of it not wanting to do what it should be doing. They couldn't figure out how to bridge the gap between this line and this line, so it just didn't. Um, typically speaking, my advice on how to handle this tool is make a small change and hit enter, make another small change and hit enter, and just increment through that using G as your pick up where you left off thing. So what I mean by that is, um, say I want to round this out, I make this, whoa, Again, backspace will uh, will get will save you a lot here. If I do that and I hit enter, and then I'm gonna do this and hit enter, and then I'm gonna hit G again, and I'm gonna keep going until I'm satisfied with what I've with what I've done. But I want to stop every now and then because I know that Maya is gonna be kind of picky about what I'm doing here, and I want to make sure that it's remembering what I'm doing. So in this particular case, you'll see that there's a line there. I'm gonna turn the grid off so you can see what's really going on here. 
You see that there's a uh, there's another edge here. Um, if I want to, I can actually snap right to the center here, and uh, it'll create a vert there for me. Once I hit enter, it'll actually pass right over that. So I can kind of shortcut some stuff here and there. Now you'll notice um, now that I have this line here, I can kind of take it and I can um, I can manipulate it a bit. I can move this down. I can move this out. I could round out this object um, by manipulating this geometry that I just created. And now I have this like more rounded shape where before I had a very square shape. Um, so that's how the... Oh, and I want to do the same thing back here, right? Double click to select the edge loop, which is only that long. And I just wanted to move that out. So now I have this um, somewhat rounded back here, and I have a rounded bottom there, and it's starting to look a little more organic. Um, this isn't actually going to be anything, by the way. I'm just kind of messing around. Um, but yeah, so that's the uh, interactive split tool, the extrude tool, the cut faces tool, and how to manipulate geometry. Um, how to manipulate like the components of a geometric object to be more what you want it to be. The only other thing that I would talk about is, um, and I guess I can round the video out with this, is the, um, oh no, I'm going to save that for the next video. I'm sorry I teased you guys. Um, it's going to be kind of advanced vertices stuff next. So like merging vertices, moving stuff around and snapping things to other things and um, maybe doing a little bit of more extruding and all that jazz. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions of objects you want me to make, leave them in the comments and I'll totally try my best to model it so long as it's not like, hey, model this character from this video game. <laughs> like something simple. Like, um, I don't know, one of the best examples I ever got was from uh, this, this kid I was showing some stuff to and he was like, I, I want to model a spatula and it was the perfect tutorial for Maya. It was it was amazing because it was everything I could think of was being used in that spatula. So um, something like that, like a simple household object, or um, I don't know, something something along those that, those lines would be perfect for this. So if you see anything that or think of anything that you want me to make, um, let me know, and I will I will show you a step by step on how I make it and what tools I use to do it and all that jazz. So, yeah. Uh, until next time, bye-bye, and thanks for watching.